Today is Tuesday the 26th of April 2022 and we are in a beautiful bay. We've got a lot of sunshine but there are some showers so if we disappear it's because we're racing around the boat trying to put the hatches up. So before we start this week we just want to talk about next week first don't we? Yes because in the episode that just went out 299 it ended with a a sort of cliffhanger we hit some really no well, I say we hit some nasty weather we were at anchor in some really nasty weather and unfortunately everything that you saw in that video was pretty much what we recorded that night so we wanted to discuss in more detail a what happened that night but b more importantly the worst things that happen yes. at sea and there have been lots of those there have been many so we would love to hear from both sailors and non-sailors. From sailors, what are the bad things that have happened to you at sea? And for non-sailors, what do you think are the worst things that happen at sea? Yes, I think sailors can also let us know their biggest fear, because I have a big fear, it hasn't happened to us, but I'm going to reveal that in that particular episode. OK, so please let us know in the comments in this podcast, this yes. week, today, let us know in the comments below uh, some of uh, your thoughts on that. Uh, but today we are going to be discussing what, Elizabeth? <laughs> so this week's podcast was sparked by Pam Early, who left that comment, which I read out last week. Can you please make a video on the top 15 objects that, in your opinion, enhance boat life? Mm. We asked you all to let us know what you thought would enhance your boat life, whether you're a sailor or not, and we were inundated. The first comment we got, I think, was from uh, Hill Ogre, who actually just said, a boat, which I thought was fair enough. I think that's you know, It's true. Isn't that a given? Well, it is a given, I suppose. If we're asking people to enhance boat life, we do assume you have a boat. Well, talking of which, I mean, you say it's a given. I think we need to kind of establish what is the difference between uh, essentials and what is a given and things that enhance your boat life. Yes. Did you have any thoughts on that? Yes, it's difficult. I spent hours putting together notes for this because I've got so many comments and I, so I tried ways to arrange them into ridiculous, to funny, to practical, to ideas. And eventually I came up with the conclusion that it depends where you're coming from and what your situation is. And we know from some of the people what their situation is, others we don't. So what might enhance our boat life isn't essential to someone else or is beyond someone else's dream. Yeah, I mean, take Peter Halliburton's comment. Peter, who's a supporter of ours. Hi, Peter. Uh, who He's talking about his boat and he wants modifications because he obviously has a smaller boat than ours. And so his modifications will enhance his smaller boat. But what he concludes by saying is enhancements are relative to where you are starting from, which I think is a, a very good point, Peter. You know, but the, our situations are all different. Yes, Adam Miller, similarly, he said, I'd be happy with an autopilot self-tailing which is in some sort of the, one of those flash clutch jammer things. <laughs> so that's, he's coming from a different place to us. Yeah, now, I mean, a clutch jammer, these are the things that stop your lines from running free. Uh, you know, I, get, I would have said that's a given, but of course, many boats don't have these, no, what we think are, you know, luxury for them and uh, you know, everyday use for us. Yes. So we had one person who came up with 15 and that was William Bunting. I thought, William, <laughs> thank you very much for that. That was really Incredible. well thought out. Mm. Yeah, so many things there. If we could do a whole podcast on what you said, William, but we're not going to. We picked out a few. There were two others, Marion and Derek Stoneman and Lawrence Anderson, who came up with 10. Well done for doing that, guys. And we picked out a few of yours too. The other thing we have to mention is that we did a poll, didn't we, in our community tab on YouTube. At the time of recording, we got over 220 votes yeah. and many comments. So really appreciate that. Now, as a statistician, of course, 220 <laughs> is uh, significant. It is statistically significant. Insignificant. It is statistically significant. That's easy for you to say. <laughs> Which basically means that we can uh, basically this represents yes. what everyone thinks in in the real world okay the only thing is I'd say it's slightly skewed because I chucked that poll up as, a, as an afterthought quite quickly and just chucked a few ideas out to get people thinking and so the um, options were electric winches marine generator flat screen TV helipad or other <laughs> yes I think you should leave the uh, the polls to me in the future, do you? <laughs> do you know, more people want a helipad than want a flat screen TV. 
I think that's a, that's a given, isn't it? <laughs> that suggests that they want the helicopter as well. Electric winches was top of that poll. But really, we were interested in other, weren't we? Yes, they were just there to sort of provoke you into coming up with your own. And we got some some great responses. And I think you've kind of gone through and sort of listed them. Yes. In most popular. Is that right? Yes. So a lot of work on spreadsheets. Um, I ended up deciding to do the most popular. So this is a this is Facebook as well, um, and and um, Patreon. All of these things all put together and the most this is the top 14 most popular because the 15th there are lots that got the same vote but anyway the 14th the top one was well you know now because I told you earlier didn't I hello I'm Liz and I'm Jamie welcome to follow the boat in which we discuss what it's really like to give it all up to live on a boat and go traveling around the world We've been doing it since 2006 and we're still at it. Each week we talk about our latest YouTube video. And about boats, sailing, travel or anything else which floats into our heads. And if you leave a comment we like, we'll give you an answer and a name check. Peace, Peace and, and fair, fair winds. winds. I did guess this one yeah. anyway and that was it, it was obviously water related and yeah. so I guessed it was water maker. Yeah. Without a doubt everybody um, wants a water maker. I wonder how many people have already got one and regard that as an essential. Well, there we go. It goes back to our, you know, the, the difference yep. between the two. Yeah, I don't know. Andre Lemons, hi Andre, said ganja, booze, <laughs> but also added unlimited fresh water. Yes. And I think that's the key, isn't it, is to have this uh, unlimited water because even for us with our water maker, only makes 35 litres an hour. We still have to be quite clever about how we use it. Yes, and we need the power to make it. So if we're at anchor for any length of time, we're not using the engine and we've got limited power coming in, can't use it anyway. Well, we do. Well, we do use it. We have to use it yeah. because if we don't use it, it clogs up. But we start smelling. Yes, but uh, yeah, we certainly we don't, wouldn't run it for as long as if we were, say, motoring all day. That's right. So, so I like I like oh, Andre's idea of unlimited yes. fresh water. Yes. That for me is essential. Yes. Um, kind of hand in hand with that goes number two on the list, which is power, uh, specifically solar power. What would you say to that? I think, now you see again, I think now because we've been doing this for so long, to me that's a given. Mm. It's an obvious one. But for a lot of people, especially people perhaps starting out, and certainly if you buy a new boat, uh, you won't have solar panels on them. Mm. Uh, but we've now got to that stage now where it's just pile on the panels. Yes, it's a question really of, of how much you want to put on the boat. Um, I'm not sure, maybe new boats do solar panels now. It's just such a big subject. It's in every forum, um, loads of YouTube channels talk about it. We've had them, what, 15 years. Um, we all know we need power. Nobody voted for wind power, by the way. Yeah, I found that quite interesting. Yeah, so I would, I would say solar power. It obviously enhances boat life, but I'd say it was something that you have to have. Mm. You've got to think about power. It's the number one topic in everything. Everything to do with sailing, you need power somehow in order to boil a kettle, make your toast, use your power tools, whatever it is. Charge the batteries for the power tools if they're not plugged in. So we need the power. Number three, any ideas? Um, lithium batteries. That is not as high as it should be. Number three is a washer dryer machine. Oh, of course. Yeah. Yes. God, we could do with a washer machine. I <laughs> know we have me and we have the shore. Yeah, now the shore is an involved process. It is. So this new location we're at, we are a good one and a half miles away from where you drop the dinghy off. So you have to find somewhere to drop your dinghy, tie it up safely, get your washing ashore. And we did this yesterday and we were having to carry a big bag of washing between the two of us in the midday sun uh, before locating a, you know, a laundrette. I'd say on the positive side, it's a great way of meeting people and getting to know a place. We had lots of nice chats with some lovely people. One fella came along on his uh, scooter 
and took the washing and you away. He did. Didn't he? It was nice of him. That was brilliant. Yeah. And you're right. It's, it's a great way. And in fact, because we had to take a detour to get to the laundrette, you know, we discovered some things along the way as well. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a, it's a good point. But it's a bit of a hassle, isn't yes, it? Yes, I'd rather be doing, rather just be walking around discovering things without a bag load of washing. Mm. So, yeah, would like one. There was an important point, wasn't there, about the size? Yes. Now, we know people that have recently installed, I think it's made by Daewoo, the car manufacturer, who have wall-mounted washing machines, but they have a limit of something like a litre and a half. Um, do they measure in litres? How do they measure washing? Kilos. Yeah, kilos. Is it? yeah, that's right. Two kilos or two, something? Two kilos maximum, which actually isn't much. It's pretty much your smalls. No, our bag of washing yesterday was just under eight kilos. Mm. So the smalls isn't a problem because I wash mine daily. When we have a shower, wash what you're wearing, easy peasy. That sort of thing. That's why you can go for six weeks at a time without stopping anywhere, not worrying about it. It's the sheets that take up. Yes, the and, and washing sheets on one of those little wall-mounted washing machines is probably not possible. Or you'd have to do one at a time. Perhaps one at a time, yeah. Yeah, so it would be possible. It would use a lot of water, so you'd have to have the water maker that you've already said you need, and you'd need the solar power to uh, to make I seem make to remember th those day wall mounted washing machines used round about 40 to 45 litres which right. would take us just over an hour to make so for those kind of washing machines um, they're actually quite efficient but uh, yes you definitely need that water maker as well. So we'll see if that makes our list later because we've got our own list which we're going yep. to come up with. Okay. <laughs> so that's washing machine and then the next one um, was slightly left of field um, a great crew or partner. Yes. Now, Couldn't I like, agree more. I like these because a couple of people said this. I think it was MX5, 1989, he, he or her calls herself, himself, who says, rum, good company and good fishing. Agree with all of those. And Dan Knox says, cute crew, Liz is a winner. <laughs> Would you agree? Dan, if only you knew the <laughs> truth. <laughs> I saw that comment but was too modest to pick it out, but uh, thank you, it's very kind. But I think for anyone who has been sailing with both good and bad crew mm. knows that, um, you know, when you get awkward crew... Oh dear, the boat's a small place, Yeah, really, and also if you, you and your partner are having problems, it's a very, very small place, and when you're at anchor miles from anywhere, you can't get off. You've yeah. got to get on with it. Michael Tillman uh, supports that, and he says, crew that you can get along with and that can understand when someone's shorts are in a bunch. <laughs> it's not personal. Do you agree or maybe you disagree? Leave a comment for us on Twitter at Follow the Boat. And then we have adult beverages, which is something that you would have said yes to a couple of years ago, wouldn't you? Sorry, adult beverages. <laughs> More than one person said that? Uh, yes, six. Oh, okay. Six people said adult beverages. Well, I did just read uh, one out, didn't I? I just said rum. That's right, there you go. And that, that counted as, well, as one of the votes. So quite a few people said, you know, a nice beer, uh, a beer fridge, somewhere to put your beer, a good drink at the end of the day. Um, my tallying wasn't scientific, by the way, so some of these may be wrong, but they're in, they're in the ballpark. So adult beverages, yes, I like a whiskey of a night. I usually have a little little whiskey at the end of the night and you always used to have beer every time we stopped. Yep. Every time you woke up, every, every time, time you we, went to bed. Every, every time, time we dropped the hook. <laughs> yes. So, yes, absolutely. Um, well, Tony Carter goes one better. <laughs> I've got Tony as well. Tony says sex, drugs and rock and roll. <laughs> yeah, that's so Tony. Yep. Uh, yeah, I'd agree with that, definitely. <laughs> and someone said ganja, I didn't get the name. Yeah, that was Andre Lemons. Oh, that was Andre. Yeah, he said, Ganja, booze, unlimited fresh water. I mean, he pretty much sums it up, doesn't he? Yeah. So uh, I think all these things enhance life generally, don't they? Yes, don't have to be on a boat for these things <laughs> to enhance your life. So back to reality, freezer comes next. And I love our new freezer. Mm. It has enhanced our lifestyle no end. Definitely. One yeah. of the main reasons is we can put fish in it. Yes. It's a game changer. Yeah. It really is. We've always wanted one, but just never got around to sorting it out until we managed to pick up our second-hand portable freezer and it's just been on all the time and it's been great. It is great. It means, as I say about the fishing, I can fish, catch a fish, chop it up, put it in the freezer and then catch another one. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we've had uh, fish non-stop really since, uh, since we started using it. 
Yes, so love freezer. Here's an interesting one, a shower with hot water. Now again, for some people, they've probably always got hot water on demand. For other yachties, you know, they're struggling to even have the water to have a shower and even then it will be cold. So yes, now I should make the point that even in the tropics, I like a hot shower. Yeah. Because you do get sweaty, lots of dry skin, uh, salty obviously when you're in the sea. And hot water is really the only way to get clean properly. It certainly makes you feel cleaner, doesn't yeah. it? Um, we do have that facility on Espa. We haven't quite connected up the hot water system yet, so we just rely on the water on, from the calorifier when the engine's been on, but once it's used, that's it. Yeah. Uh, but it is lovely to have that really hot shower. Yeah. We quite often use it when we're actually on passage. Yeah, well, when we've got the water maker running and yeah. the engine on, it means we have unlimited water and we have lots of hot water. So quite often that's when, as you say, that's when we'll have a shower towards the end of the passage, perhaps after you've put the sails away and you're just motoring the last few miles. Yeah. Uh, it's a good time to have a shower. It means we've got a full tank of hot water at the other end, which we're not going to waste on showering. Yeah. So yes, the hot water for us, yes, it's, it's, it's wonderful. But imagine being in a cold place, how it's a necessity, isn't it? Yeah, hot water shower in a cold place is just a way of waking up and getting yeah. warm, isn't I mean, it? How else would you get clean if we were in the UK? What about a salty lass? They've had some terrible weather up where they are. Yeah. Freezing. What will they do without hot water? Just get used to washing in cold water. <laughs> <laughs> no thanks. OK, so after hot water, um, we've got... These all got three votes. There are loads of different things, but all, these all got three. AC. What now, AC, you mean alternating current, as in mains power, <laughs> I mean, two, 220 volts or 110 if you're in the States or Japan or wherever else it is. No, air conditioning. Oh, you're, to oh, yes. you're not talking about... No. Oh. You got the wrong end of the stick. Oh, right, OK. I have to say, AC for us only really figured when we were in either a marina or perhaps more importantly on the heart mm. in the tropics because we are firm believers in not needing ac when you're a tanker mm. because you tend to point into the wind so mm. even what little breeze you get so i don't think it's essential at all uh, when you're at anchor. However, can I just point out, people might be looking at us and seeing us sweating and wondering why you're saying that. That's because we've got all the sides down to uh, stop the air and the wind and we've also got some lights on our faces. But normally this is the place we come to cool down. I think also going back to the original question which was to enhance boat mm. life and AC certainly does enhance your boat life when you are very hot. It mm. is nice to duck into an AC cooled saloon mm. uh, and especially at night perhaps. You know, when you're trying to get yeah. to sleep. And I think one person, I, I forgot to make a note of their name. One person actually makes the point that it is specifically for when it's been hot all day and then it rains in the evening and you have to close all the hatches. Yes, that's, that's our problem. That's when you really need the AC. Yes, what we need to do is to work out a system to put in something over the hatch, over the, over the bed, so that when it rains we can keep the hatch open. Yeah. We need to do that. But yeah, I, I like the idea of AC particularly in marinas. Um, we've spent the last two years a lot of the time in the marina in Saba and it would have been good to have AC. On the other hand, I do think it's important to acclimatise to the place you're in. Well, when we were in India and we yeah. had the full-on domestic two-piece yeah. AC system, it was a very good way of never leaving your boat. Yeah. You'd close everything up and you never got out. That's what we tend to find with people with AC in marinas. You never see them because yeah. they're down below. Yeah. Six yeah. of one, half a dozen the other. Yeah. On the fence with that one. It would enhance your life, though, if you could put it in, wouldn't it? Yeah. For me, the next one is absolutely essential and certainly would enhance life, and that is the bed that you sleep in. Mm -hmm. So the mattresses, getting the right kind of mattress. You're, you're in that bed every night if you're a cruiser. It's as important as the bed you would have had at home on land. And secondly, someone else said they'd like an island berth. They don't have to climb across each other or one over the other or climb underneath something to get into bed. We're lucky we have got an island berth. Um, and I've seen many boats that don't and I couldn't, couldn't be doing no, that. No, I couldn't, no. I mean, we've seen all kinds of uh, berthing configurations on boats. And I think it's one area where 
boat designers shouldn't compromise on. And, and certainly it was one of the reasons why we went for Esper mm. was when we walked into that aft cabin and we saw A, the size, so it's like she's a queen size, uh, B, the ease of access. Uh, and, and also see being able to stand up around it as well. Yes, it, it, it seems odd, doesn't it? Counterintuitive to think that you need plenty of room in the bedroom where all you're going to do is sleep for most of the time and you're not going to be running around in there, probably not. And so why does it need to be big? And I can understand that some people say I'd rather compromise on the space there because I'm doing going to sleep and have more space elsewhere. But you, it's, a, it's just a feeling of space, it's just that feeling. That, that you walk in and you feel comfortable and you feel at home and I think it really, really for me, really important, couldn't do without it. And also the bed itself, as yes. they've said, you know, the, the mattress is really important. I've got a little um, latex topper as well, which really helps and, and not skimping on that foam. Yeah. And of course, we know some people that have even got custom made spring mattresses yeah. as well. That's something I'd like. Mm. I'd, add, I'd add that to the list. We were approached by somebody in, in North America saying they could make them for us, but they didn't realise we were in Borneo. But yeah, I'd love, I'd love that. That is something on my list. Okay, so the cockpit enclosure or dodger. Well, everyone who knows us knows how important this dodger has become to us. And why has it become that important? Well, it just means that when it does rain, we can stay up in the cockpit. Yeah. And it goes back to this idea that previously when it rained, it wouldn't take long before you got wet with your canvas spray hoods and your canvas bimini. Uh, so you'd have to close everything up again and then you're sitting down below getting hot in the tropics and sweaty because you've had to close all your hatches. I mean there is some canvas that's very good and it do doesn't have to be a hard dodger like ours I would say. I think the importance is that you have it, that you have total enclosure. Mm. Do you not agree? Do you remember when we first got the boat? All we had was a spray hood. We didn't even have a bimini. Yeah. And then when we got the bimini, we designed it so that it could be folded forward. Yeah. So we could go back to just spray hood or not or neither. Yeah. And I do miss that open plan feeling. Yeah, I think you're actually agreeing with me because I was saying. Uh, you you know, said all enclosed. All enclosed. No, but 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 you open it. The point is that you can enclose it when you need to. Mm. When it's pissing with the rain and it's stormy you're at the wheel and you and you don't want the whole of the cockpit to fill with water you need to be able to enclose it but it can be canvas it doesn't have to be solid like ours you can have a great canvas one which does exactly what you said so which why, is all folds back why didn't we go for a canvas solution then i don't know because we couldn't well it, wasn't I, it too difficult no i think it was actually because we were planning to go to colder climates yes there was that wasn't there and, and heavier weather but i mean yes you're right it's possible to do with canvas but i think having the solid solution yeah. for for me now i've got so used to it i actually prefer it yes it is good and it and it's something to hold on to <laughs> as well yeah. i do like it i would like a bit more open but yep so there we go enclosed dodger for those moments when you need to be enclosed so a couple of people who are into having fishing line and good fishing well Preaching to the converted, obviously I think fishing is, is absolutely intrinsic to being on a boat. You're out at sea, you've got all that food around you, you should be fishing. So you need decent fishing rod and line and practice, practice, practice. And then you can just have all the best fish all the time. Okay, yep, couldn't agree more, yep. Ice maker. Now we have tried, we had two ice makers, <laughs> one after the other. It was something I always wanted. Of course now it's moot because we have the freezer so we can make ice. And I think if you've, got freezer, if you've got a freezer, you don't need an ice maker because let's be clear, ice makers are a waste of space. They're but, big, aren't they, for what they produce? But they, all they produce is watery ice. Little, pe little tiny pebbles, no Just, bigger than your thumbnail. And they melt as soon as you take them out the tray and you put them in your drink, they melt. Sorry for interrupting, but while I've got you here, if you like what we do and you want to support us and become a Patreon, or join us on FDB Mates, or even drop a quid in the rum fund, go to followtheboat.com forward slash pub. Of course, come to the pub. Next on the list is lithium. I've only got three mentions. Yeah, I wonder why that is. Yeah. I, I mean, even now in 2022, we get the odd comment from people that are not convinced with lithium. Mm. They're die-hard lead-acid fans, uh, or, or even gel. And that always I find curious, because 
back in the day before we got lithium, I think it was a valid. Uh, it was valid to question it because it was such a new technology, right. and more specifically, its application on a boat was very new. So people were worried about the danger. Yeah, the danger, the installation, the regulation of the charging, all that kind of stuff was very new. But in 2022, we're in a situation now where lithium, it, for me, it makes sense. In fact, it's it's illogical not to have it. It just doesn't make sense to not have it. It revolutionised life on Esper, didn't it? It certainly did. I mean, I, you know, it's probably in there. If we didn't have it already, it would be in my top five because it enhanced our life no end. Yes. We, I've said it before. I've said it in this podcast already. I've used the expression game changer. Lithium batteries is one of those absolute game changers. Yes. So we got more things. We got rid of gas pretty much, didn't we? Once yeah. we got that. And um, we installed an induction hob, which is on um, somebody's list, I can't remember who, um, as, as something they would like. Uh, oh, it's Marion and Derek, they want a hob, so we were able to do that. Um, what else have we got here? There, was, uh, there were a few items that scored only two, were mentioned only twice, but I think they're pretty important. AS and radar, AIS, sorry, and radar. They certainly enhance <laughs> your life aboard. Uh, but for me, they kind of, certainly radar falls in that it's a given. Must have. Yeah. Yeah. But no, fair point. Fair yeah. point. If you haven't got them, or one, or have only one or the other, get, get them both. Yes. And if you're doing lots of uh, passage making and navigating, as we have been doing for the last couple of months, uh, you know, that AIS and, and even the radar have been on all the time. They've yeah. certainly enhanced our uh, navigating uh, through these yes. last few weeks. So. The AIS, the, the authorities like you to be on AIS. They feel safe when they know that you're on AIS and you're, you're honest and you're out there and you're telling them where they are. Um, the other thing that was quite interesting that only two people mentioned was Davits. Good one. Mm. Another game changer for mm. us. Yeah. Um, for years we didn't put Davits on the boat because we were told don't spoil Esper's lines. Mm. And then we got to that stage in our cruising life that we realised forget what it looks yes. like we the, you know these are so practical for both hoisting the dinghy and for putting the solar panel on and i'm sure there's a few other things we could add to the davits somewhere to put your fishing rods you yes. could mount a, a, a an outboard engine crane on it you know it, they are very versatile and very useful i mean before we had it we used to have to put the dinghy on the deck didn't we yeah and that was a pain in the butt real pain so I don't know how we managed without it, really. No. So yes, Davit's absolute given for me. Um, then a bit more niche, heating or, and in insulation. Well, really important if you're in a cold climate, obviously. Mm. It's something we thought about a lot when we thought we were going to a cold climate. At the moment, jury's out on whether we go or not. But yeah, absolutely massively important. Um, good toilet. Yeah, this is a good one, actually, yeah. because there is such a thing as a rubbish marine toilet. Yes. And uh, whether, whether it's electric or manual, first of all, it's about how comfortable it is to sit on. Because some of these marine toilets are horrible and flimsy with... Tiny. ...seats that stick to your bum and bend and contort. And are just, you know, when you're using them, when you're living on the boat, horrible. And come on, it's a basic function. We're all using that toilet at least once or twice a day. Yep. Yep. God, so someone said they'd like an electric and some, someone said with fresh water flush as well. So I think that is because it's better for the system if it's in fresh water going through rather than seawater. Now we on our boat, for those who don't know, have a basin that is set obviously above height, above the toilet, and that basin leaks into or drains into mm. the toilet. So mm. the toilet is getting fresh water flushed through it every day anyway. This is an ingenious thing that I came up with. <laughs> you are a genius. Someone said, that doesn't it back flush? And it doesn't actually. No. The pipes no are problem. done in such a way that when you flush the loo, there isn't a back flush back into the sink, which no. is a valid question. But yeah, I think that fresh water in the toilet, going back to our unlimited supply of fresh water, if you had that, then yes, it would be nice to plumb toilets in to be flushing with fresh water. I think because you're less likely to get all the um, the growth and the calcium build up in the pipes. Yeah, I mean, a lot of that comes from the pee. So mm. uh, I didn't put it on my list, but I'm thinking about it now. I'm thinking that a new system for us, a LAVAC, 
electrical system would be something I'd really, really like. Mm. Our toilet itself is lovely. It's like a normal house size loo, isn't it? It's really comfy. It's a baby Blake. Yeah, love. baby Blake. Wouldn't wouldn't get rid of that. But no. it, the flushing system, we could certainly think again about. Okay, so those are the top ones, and then there are mountains of other things that came up. I kind of broke them down a little bit. Uh, Milko Bourbon, and I share your view. Just says about fifteen foot extra. Yeah, I like that yes. comment. Now that does apply to anyone with any size <laughs> boat, because as we know. You invariably, uh, like a hermit crab, will expand into the space that you have, and you could always do with an extra 15 foot. I like that analogy. That's what sailors are. They're hermit crabs, yeah. moving from one to the other quickly into the newer space. Yep. Yeah, that is totally, totally with Milko on that. Uh, it goes along with wider doors and higher ceilings, which came from William. Yeah, a lot of the doors never wide enough, are they? No. How many times do you smack your head? Oh, I do on our on our door frame. Yeah. Oh. We're lucky our ceiling is reasonable height, but he says it is one and a half but meters. But did someone came up with freeboard? I think about how much head height they have. Yes. And they, I think they said they were only five foot seven. But no, they, that's it, William. That was William, yeah. right? And uh, you know we are around about five ten. You're five nine. I'm oh, five right. ten a yeah. bit. Five yeah. ten and a half. Um, and I think our ceilings must be around about six foot. Yeah, we're lucky. So for anyone yeah. taller, having these lower ceiling boats is a real pain. Yes. It would really enhance your life. Now, we know tall sailors who have bought boats specifically for uh, the head height that they have in the ceiling. And we know some very tall sailors who haven't got boats that are big enough and they just sleep deal on the with deck. it and sleep on the deck. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Marion and Derek, they said headsets to communicate on deck and they specifically want Bluetooth headsets. We tried using handheld walkie-talkies, didn't we? Why didn't we use them anymore? I think we just fell out of practice with them. And also, I think when the weather is fair, mm. uh, we have a range of arm signals. We do, and also we've got a centre cockpit. So if you're in the middle and We're I'm at the front. We're so far away to talk to yes, each other. But in bad weather, it's certainly useful. Oh, I so think it would be essential. Yeah, I think uh, waterproof Bluetooth headsets. And there's the crux, they've got to be waterproof yeah. because I sometimes have waves washing over me. So you've got to have something that's really robust. robust. I guess there's the marine version of something like that. Well, I think what happened with, uh, we had the little um, handheld walkie talkies and I think what happened was in a squall, mm. they got wet yeah. and then the voice got all muffled and yeah. we couldn't hear it it's just basically they stopped working so yeah. yeah so one other thing though which would be great is to learn sign language can you imagine i've often thought if you were deaf on a boat and, you, and your partner was deaf you'd just be able to talk to each other anyway yeah yeah i mean essentially what we do when we're dropping and weighing anchor is sign language yes. you know we are using a series of <laughs> arm signals <laughs> for those not watching the video <laughs> just listen lizzie's using some certain hand signals which I've forgotten the about. bird, they say in America. <laughs> Did you know we have a blog? Followtheboat.com. Come over and have a look. It has all our podcasts, all our videos and lots of other special bits, including a shop. Yes, we sell T-shirts, hats, all the usuals. It's really good clobber. So come along, have a look at followtheboat.com. Tuvia says freezer, solar generator, water maker. Okay, those are all classics, we've dealt with those. But he also says, she, he, and lots of spare parts for mechanical issues along with tools. There's a certain tool for every certain yeah. job and invariably you do not have all the tools on your boat for every single job imaginable. And we've been caught out a number of times where you end up either, we try not to borrow tools off other yachties if we can help it, but we'll, you'll end up having to go into town to buy the tools. And so a, a work bench. Oh, that with would be fantastic. Every single tool on it would yeah. be marvellous. If we redesigned her, I think we'd put a workbench in, wouldn't we? I think you'd need a bigger boat. You'd need that extra 15 foot. <laughs> yes, we would. OK, but yeah, absolutely. Couldn't agree more with that one. William Bunting talks about a cookbook. Now, I think food is something that's been really overlooked on this list because I tell you, when you're living on a boat, you think about food every day, it's really, really important. How to cook it, how to store it, how to, where you get by it, what it is, and blah, blah, blah. But William's take is that he wants a book that does two things. 
not so much recipes but food combination on ideas and how to mix spices to make mud taste great and secondly range for extending your food yes rage extend range extending food what are you ideas. Talking about? he wants to be able to extend his food so make it last longer and use it for different things so he talks about Pascal on free range sailing. I don't know Pascal, but apparently she can do great things like make yogurt, um, turn basic into great food, and does growing all kinds of, th kinds of things on board. Now we do quite a bit of that. I make yogurt. I've had the same yogurt pot going now for two months, constantly on the go. But yes, a really, really important to get, understand how to cook on a boat. It's not the same as being at home. Your yogurt's very good, isn't it? And you've learned so much over the years. And of course, one of your books that you use is the Cruising Chef's Cookbook, That's which you frequently refer to in our videos. And mm -hmm. he does show you how to make very good meals out of basic stuff using just basics that you would ha probably have on the boat anyway. Yeah. Uh, half the kitchen, the galley, is spices and herbs different sauces. types of oils and yeah. sauces. You can take some rice, which you can store easily, and turn it into something that's actually quite tasty. So it's massively important to know what to do with all those spices. Yep. Right, okay. um, we've got some weather coming in. Oh, yes. And I can feel the wind is now changing direction. So I think we need to be thinking about wrapping up. But before we do that, should we just talk about what we think would enhance our life on board Esper? Yes, I agree. So 15 for me was far too much to come up with, unless we bought a new boat. So I'm trying to come up with things that would enhance the boat that we have now. That's what I've got. What have you got? Well, when I thought of you, I mm. thought that you would include the things that you now have, which are a bread maker and a rice cooker. Oh, that's true. I didn't put those on, but... Yes. Because we, I mean, we have them now, but for those who are able to have run run these items, yes. those two are, we use them every day. Yes, they are massively important. Going back to food, again, people have forgotten just how important the, the food, food and drink is. And someone else came up with put an espresso machine to put on top of their uh, cooker, which we have and you use every day. Yeah. Now, the, one, the first one I came up with is actually come about only recently after an incident which we've yet to cover in our vlogs. That is a better bleed system for the engine. Oh, it's hopeless, isn't it? Yeah. I won't go into detail about what happened, but it was, it really bothered me that I wasn't able to solve this situation quickly or at all. And it came down to the fact that I wasn't able to bleed mm. the, the engine. This is basically when you get air in your uh, fuel line and uh, obviously the engine cuts out and I had real problems trying to bleed it. Mm. So that's something that I still would like to look at. Can't do much about it here because we can't get the necessary parts that we need shipped in easily where we are currently. That's very specific. It is, but it's not just about helping you out with the situation when it happens. It's just that peace of mind. So that goes back to the idea of having a great set of tools and all the, all the things you need and the spares, doesn't it? Yeah, kind of. Because it's a tool, isn't it? Not really, no. This is a... Uh, an inline system that would allow you to bleed it without having to use tools. Oh, I see. All right. Okay, I got it wrong. Electric toilet with fresh water flush, as we've said earlier, is on my wish list. And also, I didn't say it, but a washing machine, a large one, as Steve Planet says, not just for underwear, I'd like one of those too. Yeah. I would like an engine driven water maker. Yes. For the amount of motoring that you end up doing, or at least how frequently you have the engine on, if you can imagine we were making 150 litres for every hour that engine is on, we would be able to wash down the whole boat in fresh water. Yes, I wrote that as well. You did? Yep. I also wrote a marine generator. Yes, because I mean, our petrol generator is great, but we have to stow it away, get it out. We can't use it in the rain because it has to sit on the deck. It's not plumbed in so that the exhaust automatically is taken off the boat. So we have to be careful about it, position it always downwind. Uh, yes, of course, marine generators are one of those things that notoriously go wrong all the time. Yeah, it'd be something else that you'd sweat over and swear at, but... Just be able to flick a switch and turn it on. Yeah. How much easier would that be? For sure. Now here's one for both of us. Yeah. 
some kind of mast climber or steps. Oh, yes. Yes. Because there's a couple of things I still need to do up the mast and we've kind of avoided them because it's, it's a chore at the moment, isn't it? We need a much better system for getting up the mast. Yep. You can get me up, but it's more difficult for me to get you up. Strangely, I can get you up the main mast because I've got a better winch, but getting you up the mizzen is just impossible. Focus. Can't yeah. get you up there. So we definitely need to rethink that. Yeah, totally agree, yeah. I put bow thrusters. Mm. They've, yes, I suppose so. They enhance your life. Yes. They would, because quite often we get stressed in marinas when there's a lot of side wind and stuff going on. I just don't go into marinas when there's no. a side wind. But with the bow, th bow thrusters, it would be less of a worry going into these yeah. difficult places. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a fair point. It is a fair point. That's it, my list. Okay, I have... I had a couple more. I just agreed with the uh, refrigeration. Uh, we know people that have domestic fridge freezers on their boats. Um, why not? If you've got the power to run a domestic fridge. What's the advantage of that, though? Just ease of access. I mean, how often so you do you stand up? Over yeah. The door how one? often do you complain about yes. you know the top loading fridges yes. and how difficult they are a to get into and b to actually stow stuff in a way that you can get access to everything. I like the idea of those, but they are they don't hold as much. True. The capacity is not as good, and also if you're healing right over and you're healing the wrong way, when you, when you open the door, what's going to happen? Mm. Is it going to fall on top of you? Yeah. Good point. I don't know. I think a better system than we have at the moment is the, a top loader but a better one for me. Is that it? I thought of one more uh, but just at the last minute okay. and that's some kind of single bilge collection and yeah. I think there, there's a name for these I think they're called swan fittings yes. uh, so rather than having multiple outlets on the boat you have one you still separate your engine mm. so basically you have grey and What's it called? Grey water and then black water. Well, black water's poo, isn't it? Okay, so... We've got a tank. Yeah, that. okay. But I, I know people that, and I think they're doing this more modern boats, is to have a single collection point for mm. your bilge because then you don't have multiple through-hull uh, seacocks and fittings. Yes, yes I've read about that. That would be nice. Mm. Yeah, that would be nice. Yeah. There is one more thing which we've both forgotten, and that is a cat. A cat? Mm. They... Pets enhance <laughs> your life, whether you're at sea or on shore. Yes. One day we will have another cat, or a pet, or a dog, or both, and a duck and a goat. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, just thinking about Millie and thinking about cats and dogs, I immediately feel happier. Yes. Okay, so next week we are going to be talking about worst things that happen at sea, and we would love to have your input. So yes. please, in the comments below, uh, or you can tweet us on Twitter, at Follow the Boat. Send us your thoughts and maybe your experiences. I'd of, love to read some genuine experiences yeah. of what's happened and the, you know, the most terrifying things. Right, well, we now have to... I can see the clouds building up there. We've got to start thinking about getting the boat ready for a bit of a blast.